Hey guys, so today we are getting a tour of uh, a very good friend of ours boat, Kevin Barber, who was our broker and helped us find our boat, our Niagara, and he has a Pearson 36 cutter. That's right kids, it's time to get on some different boats. As promised, we're going to tour boats for you so you can learn about more models and find your boat sooner. First, a Pearson 36 cutter. You ready? Come aboard. Any of you do this, walk the docks, look at boats, whether you're in the market or you already own a boat, don't we all just like to look at boats? <laughs> but if you're shopping, you're probably spending a lot of time online looking at boats. It's hard. There's so many different models, different types of boats. You know, it's tough to find the right boat for you. We want to help. As I've mentioned on the Patreon campaign, we're going to start doing boat tours. When we find boats out on the water, We'll get aboard, talk to the owner, ask them what they like about the boat, maybe what they might change, um, you know, why they chose that boat, so that we all can learn different boats and their compromises and capabilities. When we find different boats at marinas, anchorages, everywhere we go, we'll try to get aboard so we can show them to you. And we found most folks are happy to invite a lady aboard to show off their boat. It's a good thing. So get inspired, get on board, and let's go look at some different boats. Sound good? Let's get this party started then. As I mentioned, our first tour we decided would be our buddy Kevin's boat. And we've been lucky enough to be out on the water with her, so I have a really cool video with some great footage of her under sail that you can check out later. But for now, let's get the tour. Very, very, very dependable boat, very well-known boat, um, beautiful boat, you will see. And uh, he's very knowledgeable about boats, so he'll have a lot to tell us and a lot to share. And I think you'll learn a lot from him. Okay. Hey kids, uh, Ann here with HaveWindWillTravel.com and we are with Kevin Barber. He's a um, broker with Edward Yacht Sales and actually, like I said, helped us find our Niagara. So we personally know how awesome he is at helping people find boats and search for boats. And we're here today to take a tour of his uh, Pearson 36 cutter. Yep. Am I right? Yep. It's a 1982. Oh, that's me. Yep. Good um, model. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you found the boat and sort of how it came to be yours? Uh, well, I, um, I've owned the boat for about 12 years now, and um, uh, I really was looking for a liveaboard cruiser, uh, and uh, I had, you know, looked at a lot of boats, and at that time, you know, I was single, and, you know, I just wanted to live the, <laughs> live the, you know, liveaboard lifestyle, and so I was living in Charleston, South Carolina, and I found this boat in, in South Carolina. <clears throat> but really what attracted me to her is um, I love classic lines. You know, I love a classic looking boat that stands stands away from the pack. You know, it's not uh, quite as much fiberglass as some of the production boats. Um, you know, I've got a lot of wood wood to keep up with, but you know, after, you know, three or four years, you kind of get the hang of it and it's not that big of a deal. You know, it, but the things that really attracted me to this boat um, is there's not a lot of 36 footers um, that have, you know, a separate shower stall in the in the we all head. Need to have that too. Mm -hmm. And also I wanted a big cockpit, which was a really big, uh, big selling factor of this boat. It's uh, it's definitely enough to seat uh, probably eight people pretty comfortably. I think I've seen 10 on here yeah. having some rum drinks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a good space. Does this bother you here with the traveler here? You know, when I first bought the boat, this boat is a cutter. Um, so I could show you the, the whole rig. It's a little bit different, but yeah. with a cutter, you've got a mass that's aft about a, a foot aft of where a sloop's uh, mast would be mm -hmm. which really ends up a lot of them you end up with the uh, the main sheet in the cockpit the travel but right here quite honestly when i first started looking at these boats i thought oh man i'm not gonna like that but uh, after owning it for about only a year i realized that it's probably one of my favorite things about this boat really it is um, basically what i love about it is i can control the main right for here from the helm without ever having to use a winch all by myself. So this That's boat cool. is so easy to single hand. I'm just so used to single handing it all the time. So if I need to adjust the main, all I do is release it and then just yank on this line here and I can control everything with just my hand. 
so I can. And I you can, don't really have to leave the wheel too much, like it's. No. And you're tall, so exactly. <laughs> I'm sure you can just reach over and get it. It's which easy, is especially for things like jiving. Yeah. You know, I can yeah. jive it very simply just by myself without any assistance, and that's a lot of that has to do with this. If I didn't have it there, it'd be up on the cabin top, and yeah. I'd be up there pulling the winch in, yeah. and yeah. you know, it, and I'd be away from the wheel. I was really lucky to actually find this boat yeah. because it fit basically all my needs, um, you know. And then that was just a, a a plus in the end, which I didn't even realize was a plus. Which is funny. A lot of things you see a feature and you're like, oh, I won't like that. I won't like that. You know, I can't right. have boats with that. Whatever it is, let's say a traveler in the cockpit, right. and then you don't realize until you like get on the boat and use the boat or use a lot of different boats and have the knowledge right. to, to yep. work from. Yep. You kind of don't know what's gonna what you're gonna love and what you're gonna hate. You may once want something. Oh, I've got to have this. Right. I need this. Whatever it is, and you find out. Psh, like a lot I of people that, that. <laughs> a lot of people that own this boat, this and they only made about forty of this particular boat. They move it up there, and I'm like, why would you do that? Yeah. Like, you know, and, you and I up. think people don't really kind of get it um, that that's sure. that's actually a plus. Such a good um, benefit. I think. That's um, a cool thing. If you want, I could show you what makes this a, a cutter rig. If you want, I yeah. Um, there's lots of different types of cutter rigs. This one, in particular, has a self-tending stay sail. So this is called a club foot stay sail. So the beauty of it is, is once you've got it deployed and it's on its own further so everything is controlled from the cockpit oh that's cool but yeah. uh it completely tacks itself There's, and then you've got with a cutter generally some cutters will have like a, a, an actual genoa um for instance uh, island packet does that oh, okay but the only okay. problem with that is island packet it's almost impossible to tack that huge no genoa through this slot this is the slot the sail has that's to, what kind of worries me because the sail has to get through here to tack exactly. around so is a that a problem, of, you think? A lot of people that own uh, island packets, for instance, end up getting rid of this because it's so hard to use mm -hmm. with a big Genoa. To try to get it through but the, there, yeah. But the fix is, is you don't go with what the manufacturer sets it up as. Okay. So this is, this is a, a, called a, um, a Yankee cut jib. So it's, it's only about, you know, 90%. Uh, if, as far as size goes, okay, okay. And it's cut very high, so the clue is way up high. It's not down low like you see on a Genoa. Nice. So okay. So it's really easy to tack through the slot, and as long as you've got this thing flying as well, it goes through easy, and you never have to come up and pull this the sail through. It actually goes so, through all by itself. Most people that have cutters that I see mm -hmm. rarely ever use the sail. This is one of my favorite things about this boat. Yeah. Is Isn't that I cool? use it all the time yeah because it in conjunction with a yankee cut jib it's a beautiful it balances it helps boat speed it fills in the gaps of the smaller head sail yeah and yeah. it uh it self tends so there's cool. nothing cool. else to do with it i like and it. it's your first reef you put a single reef first reef in your main and now you've got the two sails intersecting on the mast yep. perfectly and the boat balances <laughs> perfectly. all right well let's check it out down below yep I really like the layout of this. I was, when we were boat shopping and Kevin was helping us, I usually didn't like this kind of jut out of a counter because it kind of, a lot of boats, it cuts it up. But yours, I guess, is so wide and so big, it's a lot more useful. Yeah, and so I see it for that reason. Yeah, that was um, that was one of the things I really wanted was a U-shaped galley. Yeah. You know, when you're looking at older boats, a lot of times you don't get that. Usually it's kind of in the corner mm -hmm. back there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like to use shape just because, you know, if, as you do your research, you figure out, you know, when you're underway, you can really kind of brace yourself Pressing. in here and, uh, like and be too. very, very comfortable. One thing I love too um, is the sink right by the cockpit because I'll tell you, you're often, you yeah. got something that needs to be stabilized, you throw it in the sink, yeah, you know, you, you can put water bottles in there, yeah. things like that that you need to grab really easily, sandwiches, yeah. whatever. I like that. If I had a sink somewhere else, tucked away over here, or here, or there, that would be a big um, downfall for me. You know, so uh, pretty standard uh, setup on the on the range. Mm -hmm. um, this refrigerator is massive. It's, uh, it's <laughs> put a dead body in it's there. It's <laughs> about I think about eight or nine cubic feet. Holy of, smokes! Uh, of refrigeration space here. Yeah, that's so that big. Was... Separate freezer, and your freezer is a lot bigger than ours. I can tell. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. You also, I think you did the covers yourself, right? I did. I've done all the fabric on this boat. I reupholstered everything. You've done pretty everything. much everything on the boat. Uh, I built it looks beautiful. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what do you like about this area? Is this table helpful, or would you do something different if you could, or do you like the layout of this I space? I love. I love having the table fold up because we rarely use it, and it just yeah. takes up space. The yeah. keel step mast. Keel step mast, which is 
when I was looking, I thought that was really important. Now I know more about boats, more modern boats. It's really not necessary to have a keel step mast. Is deck step good deck these step days? is fine. Okay. You know, it's it with newer style boats. They've they've figured that out. It's very rare to find a newer uh, version of boat that has the keel is not a bolt on keel like yours. Okay, it's an encapsulated keel, which means it's all it's part of the, the uh, it's all part of the fiberglass. It's all one piece, and then they then they put lead pellets or something like mm -hmm. that inside it when like they're kind building of create it. a keel inside okay then Very they cool. fill it with weight and then that mm -hmm. great and then they seal it up permanently and that's your, your integral one piece keel it's really tough and there's not a lot of maintenance you have to do but it's just solid and what kind of is it a full keel no no it's a it's a, a, a fin but let's see uh treasures lie in store in here we've got the head when you're God, looking beautiful. to live aboard, you know, on a 36, it was a, a pretty decent sized head. There's then, a lot of room in here. And then a, a separate shower. Separate shower stall. We Do Which, Do you use it a lot or do you find you I do more cockpit when showers? When I lived aboard, kind of. I did all the yeah. time. Okay. Cause and this was... for a couple of years, I, every day, twice a day, I take a shower. In here. How long did you live aboard? Well, about two years. You have an wow. electric head, right? Yeah. Why is that? Um, I've been through several heads uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just, it's simpler. Um, so <laughs> let's just see what's going on here. The V-Birth. V-Birth. Yeah. It's pretty decent size, but you know, pretty basic. It really is. It's a good That size, was another though. really important thing for me. I'm six foot three. So, six foot three. So I was going to call boat, you six foot four. I was going to give you an extra inch. This boat <laughs> is just about, my head just basically touches. So I'm, yeah. it's got about six foot three um, headroom, which is uh, which volume. Lot. Is there anything about the boat, if you could change, that you would? No, I can't think of one <laughs> I thing it. I would want to change about it. this boat. That's it's been, it's been, uh, it's been perfect for me. It's, it's amazed me how tough it is. You know, I've, I've, I hate to admit it, but I've actually had run-ins with huge marker buoys before, mm -hmm. and this boat. You know, under full sail, going six knots, hitting a marker buoy <laughs> dead on. There wasn't dead even on? a there wasn't even a scratch. Like wow. it literally just bumped it out of the way. Very and forgiving. Just, it stopped the entire boat. <laughs> <laughs> but it pushed the buoy aside. But eventually, it popped I've got up. This. Uh, the, I've got oh my! This. And I literally was freaking out because I thought, oh my god, I got it. I had to put a hole in this boat. Had to. So I'm running up to bow, freaking out. All there was was Very a little bad. bit of paint, a little yellow paint on there. Mm. I thought, oh, no way! I'm checking the bilge. There's no water. <laughs> Wow. It just shrugged it That's off. So you have to be like, thanks boat. <laughs> if this were a, uh, a newer production boat, yeah. uh, like a Catalina or a Beneteau or something like that, I, I would have done some damage. And I probably would have sank it, but it would have been, uh, would have been some money in uh, time in the boat yard. One thing I get from a lot of my followers, they um, a lot of them are like shying away from the newer boats, say like a lot of the hunters or the Beneteaus thinking they're not blue water savvy enough or they're not built strong enough. Um, but I don't think they know really what they need and what they want. So what advice would you give someone that's just thinking about going cruising, you know, and starts boat shopping? I think buy the boat that fits you now. You can, you can enjoy a boat for the next five years on a boat that's not blue water. A blue water boat, you know, people all over the place are cruising around in production boats. Perfectly happy, you know, no problems. Um, there are a lot less maintenance. Um, they're not an older boat, you know, yeah. with an older boat, you get some problems. However, if you like the classic look and you're handy, I have to stress handy. Yeah. You have to be able to learn how to do this stuff yourself. So there's a lot less stuff you'll have to deal with on a newer boat. Of course, you're going to be spending a lot more money too. So mm -hmm. if you have $50,000 or less, you're going to be in a 1990 and older boat. Right. Uh, you know, that's just the reality of it. So. You know, as long as you're going into this with with realistic expectations of what the boat's going to do for you, absolutely a, a, a production boat's going to make you perfectly happy because in reality, mm -hmm. your first step is getting the boat and right. then learning how to sail, getting out there and doing it, and you're going to be super happy because your life changes all the time. And if you go and buy a huge like tie on a 37 or something like that with, with aspirations of going around the world. The reality is you could have bought a boat that's a lot more fun to sail and easier to single hand and a lot Maintain. faster and, you know, work, you know, just a little easier on everything. Right. And you could have had probably more fun. And then if you 
if you to ultimately want to go cruising, then you sell that boat and buy a, a cruiser. Right. Because then you get the tay on it. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and I think. I think that's great a advice. A blue water boat is purposely built to go in the ocean. Right. Most people don't go in the ocean. Most True. people are True. coastal cruising. You know, yep. that's yep. the majority of people how they use their boat. And that's and how I use my boat. Even if you want to go in the ocean, you probably need to start coastal cruising at, at, at the first. You know, Absolutely. to learn what you want in a boat, learn how you like, you know, what systems you like and what you need. It's it's hard to know what you need until and, you start and cruising don't, and somewhere. Don't get so worried about all the systems on the boat. When you're looking at boats, um, don't go. Oh, this one doesn't have solar panels. This one doesn't have wind generator. This one doesn't have a water maker. Guess what? You're not going to use half that stuff yeah. using it like you're going to use it in the first couple years of ownership. And by the right. time you're ready to start using it and you really need it, the stuff is old and halfway most of the stuff's going to be broken. Yeah, anyway. You're going to anyway. have to replace yep. it. So yeah. the main thing is buy a boat with good bones that has the basics that are in good shape, mainly an engine that's in good shape, you know, rigging and all that. You know, the main bones of the boat is what you really should care about. All the little extra bells and whistles you can add on later when you actually need them. Because yeah. half that stuff you don't need when you're first starting out. You know, just Great advice, really good advice. Coming from someone, trust me guys, who knows. <laughs> well, thank you, Kevin, so sure. much for the tour. We really appreciate it. Hope you guys love seeing a Pearson 36 Cutter 1982. Finding these boat tours helpful? Awesome! Help us by giving back and supporting our Give the Gift of Cruising campaign on Patreon. Just a few small donations from each of you and I can do something very big for one of my patrons. Get inspired and get on board! I'm looking at your, can I say that? I'm looking at your wood. So it's good that you were, yeah. you know, first reef is already set right here. Yeah, it's done. Back. And That's I've really never cool. had to do more than the first reef. Ever. That's really, ever? Wow. And, okay. and you know, and that's 30 knots of wind. It's perfectly happy with with just the stay sail up and a first reef. I'm not happy at 30 knots of wind. <laughs> this is I a, can tell you that. This is a boat, you know, and then it's luckily nice, around here. It's like a little condo for the weekend, you know. You yeah, know, exactly. Get out. We all have a good time and hang out with everybody. And That's right. Kevin's always near us because he makes really good drinks. <laughs> <laughs>